We started a discussion of the pelvis with the pelvic skeleton. This is the os coxa, otherwise known as the pelvic bone. Three separate bones. First one is the ilium. And if we look closer at the ilium, we have the iliac crest, the posterior superior iliac spine, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, this notch here, the greater sciatic notch. Looking at this bone of the pelvis called the ischium, we have the part that you sit on, ischial tuberosity, this feature, ischial spine, and the notch here, the lesser sciatic notch. Third and final bone of the pelvis, the pubis bone. We have the pubic crest, and here is the pubic tubercle. This hole in the pelvis is called the obturator foramen. All three bones are involved in this, the acetabulum. The point of contact between the two pubic bones is called the pubic symphysis. And the joint between the sacrum and the pelvic bone is called the sacroiliac joint. This ligament which connects the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity called the sacrotuberous ligament and this ligament from the sacrum to the ischial spine the sacrospinous ligament on the sacrum itself we see this feature as the disc of l5 called the sacral promontory and the foramina and the anterior aspect are called the ventral foramina. Finally, we have one more bone. Distal end of the sacrum is the coccyx. The pelvic inlet. Pelvic outlet is that two-dimensional surface <clears throat> from the inferior aspect of the pubic bones to the tip of the coccyx. The pelvic diaphragm is made up of the group of muscles here, which is called the levator ani, and this muscle here, called the coccygeus muscle or ischiococcygeus muscle. This muscle is also part of the true pelvis, the obturator internus, and then we have this muscle, which is the piriformis muscle. Also found within this space are the rectum. ureters and the urinary bladder. The contents of the male pelvis specifically can be viewed from the posterior side by eliminating the pelvic floor muscles. The folded peritoneum between the bladder and the rectum forms the Recto vesical pouch. 
This is the seminal vesicle or seminal gland. Just inferior to the bladder is the prostate gland. This duct from the testes is the ductus deferens or vas deferens. This feature here is the ejaculatory duct. And then this feature within the prostate is the prosthetic urethra. If we examine features that are unique to the female pelvis, we start with um, from outside going in, feature here, which is the vaginal canal. We remove the pelvis bone and the femur. We get a better look from the side to see the orientation. Traveling further up, we have this structure here attached to the structure above it called the cervix. The space around the cervix is the fornix of the vagina. The organ superior to it attached to the cervix is the uterus. This is the uterine tube or fallopian tube. And that is the ovary. The ligaments of this region are very poorly represented by this program. Um, this is the ovarian ligament. Ligament that's not shown that attaches the ovary to the wall here is the suspensory ligament of the ovary. And we have this ligament going out the inguinal canal is the round ligament of the uterus. It is a sheet-like ligament which contains many of these vessels. It's called the broad ligament of the uterus. Inferior to the uterus, attached at the level of the cervix, are the cardinal ligaments. And then finally from the side, we can see two invaginated spaces created by the peritoneum, recto uterine pouch, and then anterior to that is the vesico-uterine pouch.